Palm Tree is hiring now for consulting roles across its U.S. offices. You can apply at palmtreellc.com or through the link in the show notes. But why should you care? Palm Tree is a premier M&A consulting and advisory firm that sits at the intersection of strategy, finance, and analytics. The firm looks like a traditional consulting firm from the outside, but it's much more than that, functioning as a one-stop shop to support private equity clients. Palm Tree focuses exclusively on mergers and acquisitions and the private equity investment lifecycle, transactions, transitions, and transformations of businesses. Sound exciting? To learn about open roles and to apply, click the link in the show notes or go to palmtreellc.com. Welcome to this episode of Strategy Simplified. I'm very excited to bring you another conversation where we get to know L.E.K. Today with Gigi Wong, Managing Director and Partner in L.E.K. Consulting's San Francisco office. We're rewinding the clock to hear about Gigi's first experience with L.E.K. as a summer consultant, including what she remembers from the experience and what's kept her at L.E.K. We'll also discuss the various entry points into L.E.K., average tenure to promotion per role, and some thoughts on applying. I hope you enjoy the discussion. Gigi, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Before we jump in, I'm really excited to get to know more about your professional background and your journey and the work you're doing now at LEK, but we do have a little bit of a tradition here at Strategy Simplified. We want to throw in some fun questions as well, get to know you a little bit more just on a personal level. So we'll go ahead and start there. If you could share with us, uh, I understand you're located around the Bay Area. What's one of your favorite outdoor, outdoor activities around where you live? Well, like you said, you know, I live in the, the Bay Area, so it's impossible to talk about the Bay Area without mentioning wine country. Um, mm -hmm. So my favorite outdoor activity most certainly is having some really nice wine up in a vineyard up in Napa or Sonoma. Uh, as a matter of fact, a fellow L.E. Kayer, uh, Kenny Casper, and I was just up there in Sonoma a few weeks ago, and it was a very pleasant weekend. Oh, a woman after my own heart. You know what, Gigi? That's not, I don't know that that's one of the first things that I would have thought of in terms of outdoor activities, but I can't agree with you more. I mean, I love it. That's a great start. Um, uh, another one here for you. What's something that you are consuming right now? Something you're reading or watching or listening to that you're enjoying? I think uh, I've decided that every question you ask, I'm just going to give a very unique answer that no one else can, <laughs> can repeat. Um, hopefully this will engage the listeners a little more. Um, but I have a coworker, uh, Ben Schur, who is basically a music genius. And every mm -hmm. night he sort of uploads a short live performance on Instagram. So that is my most consistent thing that I consume <laughs> it is I just watch his nightly performance. Uh, aside from that, in case people are interested in, you know, a non stalkering thing to, to also enjoy with me, I guess um, I've started, I finally started watching only murders in the building. So I mm. just got to season two. Uh, it's a great light thing to watch. Mm. Uh, I appreciate you sharing both of those. And I, it stands out to me to, to say and mention, you know, there, there are some uh, myths out there in consulting. There's a whole slew of them, right? One of them might be, I'm not going to have time to do my hobbies and I'm not going to be able to balance, you know, things that I enjoy outside of work. And here you've got Ben, who's recording what sounds like maybe, maybe kind of songwriting and recording custom things every day. How fun is that? Yeah, it's incredible. Um, I don't have that sort of talent. Uh, me neither. The only, the only thing I would be able to record is just me watching him uh, <laughs> perform, which I don't think anyone would really be interested in, in watching. So, no, But I'm, I'm glad to hear that, you know, that, that kind of work-life balance and still being able to pursue hobbies is something that can be absolutely possible. Um, and... Yeah. And, and so let's talk about something that you're excited about then in that vein. It's, it's not all work and no play. What's something on your bucket list? What's something that you would love to do or maybe you are even planning to do and looking forward to? 
Yeah. So a few of my friends have gone into an idea of renting a cabin nearby and just hang out for, you know, maybe a few days, maybe a week, work from there um, and, and really just sort of do some barbecue, maybe mm-hmm. use the pool, go on hikes. Very sort of simple vacation that's kind of like staycation because we're not really flying anywhere. We've wanted to do this for a while now and just haven't found time to do it. Mm-hmm. And so that is uh, one of the key things I'm really hoping to check off in 2022. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. I, I like the I like the mix there where you can still... You know, especially in this hybrid or remote environment, we're in the summer of 2022 right now. It's like, why not take advantage of a little bit of relocation? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I didn't get to do that during most of COVID. Uh, A lot of my coworkers did. Um, So now I'm per usual late to the party. Uh, (laughs) But but at the party. So we're excited to, to go and do this. Well, Gigi, as I understand it, as we transition to the consulting world, you are leading the party, right? So so, uh, would love to hear a little bit about your background and journey and kind of where you're at and the work you're doing right now at L.E.K. Sure. Um, So I'm a partner and managing director at L.E.K. in our San Francisco office. I actually sit in two of our practices uh, the TMT practice, as well as our financial services practice. So the crisscross between the two, fintech, is most certainly where I spent most of my days. Mm-hmm. I joined LEK as a summer consultant between my first and second year of business school at Chicago Booth, and then rejoined full-time when I graduated in 2014. And prior to Booth, I was actually at two other consulting firms. And so LEK is sort of my, my third one. And then before that, um, let's just say a few years ago, (laughs) uh, I went to college at UC Berkeley. And pre-MBA, were you also in the fintech space or did have your industry or practice area affiliations, have they changed over time? It's actually changed over time. Uh, the, The two other consulting firms that I was working with was a little bit less industry focused, uh, Mm -hmm. meaning that Uh, We were more focused on almost like a horizontal service line, if you will. So I did a lot of forensic accounting, fraud investigations, transaction advisory. Because I was based out in San Francisco, a lot of our clients ultimately ended up in tech, uh, but they weren't necessarily just tech clients themselves. Even at LEK, I actually started in our TMT practice, um, and I actually... Uh, it's a key part of kind of my journey at LEK was helping build up that practice from being relatively small when I first joined in 2014 uh, to a it being a global sector uh, today. And then as my journey through LEK's manager and principal years uh, got more experience in financial services. Fintech most certainly is a very happening place right mm-hmm. now uh, and kind of uh, turn that into a key focus area for for me and a you know big part of my my platform as a as a partner nowadays mm-hmm. uh, very excited to hear you know we're going to focus this conversation on as you alluded to the the beginning of that journey um And now that you've given me the preview that you helped build up the TMT practice, I'm even more intrigued, right? Uh, So we're going to rewind the clock. We're going to go all the way back to your opportunity and your decision to take on a summer consultant role uh, between your first and second year of your time at at Chicago Booth, correct? So... Well, if you can remember back, why LEK, right? You know, you're at you're at one of the top business schools. I'm sure you had choices and offers and options. What drew you to LEK? So I think it's safe for me to say this after so many years, <laughs> but I really didn't know much about LEK when I first got to business school. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I knew about consulting. I knew about management consulting coming from the industry itself, um, but I, I didn't really know a lot about the nuances of the different firms. Really, until I started attending the information sessions, uh, chatting with the folks from the firms during coffee chats, and then also connecting with some of my classmates. That were LUK sponsored, and that's when I really got to know the firm a bit more and more intimately, if you will. Um, and sort of once I did that, the thing that really stood out for me was the people themselves. Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned, right, I come from a consulting background, so I knew how important. The people aspect was to this job, mm-hmm. and, and so it was really exciting to see that everybody I met at LEK seemed really intelligent, but also just really down to earth. And that combination was really important to me. I would also say that when I was talking to the L- to LEKers back then, um, and they still do today. They just genuinely seem to really enjoy working and hanging out with their colleagues, mm-hmm. and that's stuff that you can really kind of tell when you hear them talk about their friends at the firm and what they do on the weekends and how they support each other. And that was an environment that I could really see myself being a part of. I love that. Yeah, I mean, when you're when you're working long hours in a in a what can be an intense but always a team environment. Uh, the people around you, I couldn't agree more. They they are what matter the most. Um, so you're you're in this you're in this position as a summer consultant at LEK. Um, what are the responsibilities of that role? Um, it, you know, one project, only a few weeks. What do you expect of your summer consultants? Yeah. Um, thinking back, it was actually quite similar to my responsibilities as a full-time consultant. Mm-hmm. So sort of the summer 2013 and the summer 2014 are kind of similar <laughs> in some sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and during that time, I worked on two projects. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm happy to kind of share more about that. Um, but really, it was about helping manage the various work streams of a case. So that mm-hmm. can include getting my hands dirty with the research itself. So that may be secondary or doing some primary research like interviews, Mm -hmm. managing the associates and providing guidance as needed. Um, Obviously, maybe a little less so as an intern than as a full-time consultant, uh, but most certainly play the role in helping kind of scope the work streams and laying out the key steps and answering questions and working through roadblocks as it comes up. Uh, And then finally, as expected, really help pull together the deliverable or slide deck, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, You mentioned you were on two projects, and and I would love to dive into one of those that you were on during your your summer internship. Uh, If you were able to select one to tell us a little bit more about, uh, who was the client? Uh, What was the objective? What, what, What did they hire you to do? Yeah. So... The one that I remember more of um, Mm -hmm. is a commercial due diligence. So a private equity firm was looking to make an acquisition of a data backup and recovery solutions vendor, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a very exciting space, by the way. I know it doesn't sound like it, but (laughs) Um, and they asked LEK to conduct due diligence to help them understand how the target had managed to grow at a rate that was significantly higher than the market itself. Um, And really, they wanted to understand if this fast growth was sustainable, which is a very fair question to ask uh, if you're thinking about investing in an asset. So uh, the work streams itself included a very extensive primary research um, that was both a online quantitative survey as well as interviews of end customers in the target's addressable market, as well as value add resellers that help resell the solutions itself. So that was a multi week project. And 
through our work, what we found was that the company was very well regarded by those who had used them, but not very well known in a relatively crowded marketplace. As I was mm-hmm. saying earlier, it's a very exciting marketplace. So there were lots of players in there, uh, but they did do very well and people that use them do love them. And so we do believe that, or we did believe that the growth rate um, would be achievable if the company could focus on really kind of building its business through some of the larger growth uh, value add resellers um, and uh, really sort of uh, focus on building out those relationships, growing that account. Um, we did note that some of the really, really large ones, so the sort of you know largest global resellers were probably a little bit too ambitious for them, but there was a group of target resellers that would be perfect partners for them. Uh, and so that was a, a key finding um, for our client. And ultimately, the client made the acquisition um, and has done very well over the last few years. Oh, that's great to hear. I was curious as you were talking through, like if you knew a status update or not. But uh, no, that's that's lovely to hear. We'll be right back after this quick message from our sponsor. LEK Consulting, a strategy consulting firm with global reach, is hiring now for several roles across functions and geographies. At LEK, you'll find an environment that supercharges professional development and on-the-job learning. You'll gain unparalleled experience due to the rigor and diversity of the work, as well as the support and mentorship you receive along the way. At LEK, you'll work in small project teams on a range of critical problems for your clients, from growth strategy to market entry to post-merger support and more. You'll also develop a comprehensive set of critical business skills, including leadership, analytics, communication, people management, and more. If you're ready to broaden your skill set and deepen your business acumen, consider a career with LEK. Learn about open roles and submit your application now at lek.com or via the link in this episode's show notes. Well, we're going to we're going to dig back into your memories if there's a few other things you can pick up about this. Uh, If you remember kind of how was that team structured? Who are the different roles on the team? Um, and, and then speak a little bit as well uh, in terms of whether that matches the, the average LEK team today. Yeah, it was very similar. So there were three partners on the case, uh, an engagement manager who was 50% dedicated to the case. So, uh, mm-hmm. they were kind of working on two different, uh, cases at the same time. Um, this was one of our larger cases, So we had multiple consultants um, that included sort of two full time consultants and then myself as a as a summer consultant on this case. And then we had around, I think, four or five associates and associates are various levels pre MBA. um, Mm. So ranging from, you know, zero to to four or five years out of uh, college work Mm -hmm. experience. At the associate and consultant level, is it most common for individuals to be dedicated to one client and one project at a time? Yes. Everyone below the manager is dedicated to only one project at a time. At the, when someone reaches that engagement manager level, um, is it pretty standard that they are 50% and and dedicated to two clients or does that vary? Uh, It's fairly standard for them to do that. There are certain projects that require a hundred percent consultant. Um, so, you know, for certain cases that are larger, so maybe the scope of the project is a, is a bit larger and the team itself is larger, uh, a manager may only work on one. Um, but in most cases, a uh, manager's working on two projects at a time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what were things, you know, on that project as a summer consultant, what are things that, that you remember that stood out to you? That could be around client impact or yeah, something that stood out to you that made you decide that you wanted to stay with the firm? Um, I think from a client impact perspective, um, I remember sort of pulling together the, the final analysis that, that really kind of laid out what's the best way for them to think about 
these value add resellers in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. And I distinctly remember it was a simple, very simple slide uh, in, in the deck. And it made it into the executive summary. It was a slide I had worked quite a bit on. Um, and that's probably my most memorable moment of, of that project because it was such a, it felt so great to see it's just synthesized into like a, such a simple chart. Right. I think up until that point, when I thought about presentations, you sort of don't think about slides like that. You think about slides that had a lot of content that, you know, you might use a single sentence in the slide or something like that. But the synthesis of all that into a simple graph was very powerful, I guess, in in Mm -hmm. my memory in terms of why you know, that project along with the other project I did, which was on school buses, funny enough. Mm. Yeah, it was a market entry for school buses. Um, And then just the overall kind of experience with working in the team, uh, with working with the the, the people, the experience internship experience itself that LEK built for us. Mm -hmm. So all the non-project stuff as well. Um, It really was kind of that whole experience that I wanted to keep having, if that makes sense. Um, The people themselves proved to be, you know, very intellectually interesting, right? Mm -hmm. I enjoyed working with them and I felt like there was a lot left for me to learn from people that I not only respected and enjoyed working with, but also they wanted to mentor me. And that was something that was very attractive as an opportunity to join LUK after business school. Oh, I love that. It makes a lot of sense why you stuck around initially. Um, what would love to fast forward then because you didn't just stick around for a couple of years. It's what, eight or so years and running, maybe almost nine. Um, what, what's what's helped you stay the course at LEK? Why have you decided to stay with this cohort and this firm? So it's really the various opportunities I've had to do um, over the years. I know on the resume, it still says just one firm, but my roles, my responsibilities, um, the things I've gotten to do is drastically different. Mm -hmm. And all that allowed me to make an impact on my community, whether it's the office, the practice or the firm really sort of helped me understand why I wanted to be at LEK. Mm -hmm. So aside from just, you know, polishing my skills as a consultant over the years, I've had a chance to help build our TMT practice as a consultant. I worked in our Sydney and Tokyo office as a manager. Mm -hmm. I play a core role in a lot of our San Francisco office initiatives, especially during Uh, COVID. And now as a partner, I'm focused on helping build out our global fintech practice. So to be able to sort of do all those things um, and make an impact on the organization as a whole, rather the firm or the people at the firm, um, and to do that even when I was a fairly new LEKer, Mm. that's been really important and very attractive for me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, now l- let's think about, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are are hearing you and they're saying, gosh, I would love to replicate that pathway and have that journey. Um, you know, let, let me get started on the GG pathway. Um, so first off for, you know, we're here in summer 2022. Um, you still have a summer internships. You still have a summer consultant position. Um, has the look and feel of that changed at all? Um, is there anything that you want to speak to in terms of the, you mentioned the structure that the firm puts in place and the way that they support the the summer consultants. Um, how do you think about that role today now that you're a leader within the firm? I think it's structurally very similar in, in terms of 
uh, the the job responsibilities itself and the team structure, the construct of the internship itself, the kind of nine nine weeks program, if you will, is very similar. Uh, mm-hmm. You're likely to be working on two or three cases, so you have quite a bit of access to different people during your your time um, at the firm. And then I think we've always put a lot of other things around the sort of uh, internship uh, program itself as well, right? So we have a lot of activities, um, you know, that, that we get involved in. There's, you know, both kind of more social aspects as well as chances for people to get to know the firm because we do see the internship as sort of a, a, a two-way uh, merit, right? It's a chance for us to get to know the interns better to see if that's a good fit, but it's also a great chance for the intern to get to know LEK better uh, to see if they think it's a good fit. And we've always sort of treated our internships uh, that way. Do you also have an internship opportunity at the associate level or just at the consultant level? Uh, both. So mm-hmm. it's both at the undergrad as well as the uh, MBA level. And so whether whether someone's coming into the firm at associate or consultant level, they might be thinking about the broader and longer journey as well. Could you speak to at each of these roles what the average tenure is uh, starting at the associate level? Yeah. So at the associate level, it's about a four year journey to consultant. So Mm -hmm. there are various sort of titles that that um, occur during the four years. Um, but you get to sort of the post MBA level at consultant in around sort of four year time frame. Uh, we do also have what's called life science specialists. So those are folks with a PhD and those enter in a little bit more senior than the associates. And it normally takes them about two years to consultant. Mm-hmm. And then from consultant, um, that's about two to three years to, to manager. Uh, and the Length of journey, if you will, really just depends on performance. Is LEK a firm where um, you have long-term managers um, or do people rise up to a partner level or decide to leave the firm? You know, is that whole up or out idea, is that in play at LEK? Uh, there's no up or out at LEK. Um, and that's probably one of the the key things that I found very attractive about LEK. With that said, we don't have people who are managers for for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, I think people, as most do in consulting, sort of at some point realize that this may not be what they what they want to do. But we we sort of let people stay as long as they want at a level um, if they really are against making partner. I guess, uh, but but most most folks who who want to make partner um, end up making partner. Hmm. Um. Well, I'm sure that there's a lot of people who would love to get started on this journey. So, what could you tell them about uh, applying to Lek? Um, what's the best way to get to know the firm? And you know, are there any certain kind of deadlines or application uh, processes that you'd want to share with our group? Uh, yeah. So I think in terms of getting to know us, we're on campus a lot, uh, especially during the fall and, and springtime. So definitely look for us there. Uh, we also post a lot of our recent industry insights online through our websites, uh, as well as articles in, in broader publications like Wall Street Journal uh, and, and things like that. Um, If you're more interested in sort of our social aspects, Instagram is a great way to to track what we're what fun things we're doing. And then obviously you could listen to me yap away on podcasts like this uh, (laughs) uh, uh, about the firm. Uh, And then in terms of application. So there's two ways to do it. Uh, The first is we do have job postings for full time associates, consultants, life science specialists and PhD analysts on our website. And so we do review those applications on a rolling basis until positions are filled. We also recruit heavily on campus. So if we happen to be at your school, check Handshake or 1220 uh, for your school specific deadlines. 
I've also been told if you have a lot of questions that can't be answered that way, you can also reach out to one of our uh, recruiters, Renee, at r.go at luk.com uh, if you have any questions. And then uh, my understanding is that summer associates and consultant postings will be up starting August 1st. So almost there. Oh my gosh, fantastic. Um, well, Gigi, as we're thinking about you know, those prospective candidates listening who might be considering LEK versus other firms um, and thinking about launching into this recruiting process, um, anything else you want to share for them uh, as they consider whether or not to apply to your firm? I think the first thing I would say to those applicants is it's going to be okay. Um, so not a firm specific answer, but I always felt like when I was going through it, I, I wish someone had just looked me in the eye or I guess whisper into my ears since this is a <laughs> podcast that, that, that things will be okay. Um, and no matter where you go, you're going to end up having a, a great internship experience. Um, mm-hmm. You know, everyone's going to be able to to uh, as long as you look to for something you're interested in and you work hard. Um, every internship experience has something that they can teach you and, and is valuable uh, in terms of why LEK, I think. Uh, this is probably a little bit of a biased opinion, but it's a really great internship experience that is a true indicator of the full-time experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't try to create something that is more uh, sugar-coated than than the realities that you can expect. So Mm -hmm. it gives you a really true sense of what you can expect to kind of um, re-enter or or enter the workforce in. Uh, It's a really good group of people to work with. I know I've kind of talked about them quite a bit already, but you know the, we're highly intellectually curious, we're, we're down to earth, which me saying it probably doesn't <laughs> uh, prove, prove it. Um, but it's just a fun group of people to, to kind of work, work together. And then I think having worked at larger consulting firms before LUK, I think the size of LUK most certainly has been really important um, to my experience here. It's grown quite a bit over the last few years and will continue to grow quite a bit. Um, and that growth has really helped me to be able to kind of shape my own path um, mm-hmm. and, and do some really amazing and cool things that probably weren't, you know, that I wasn't expecting when I joined, joined LEK. Mm. Gigi, thank you so much for taking the time to share all your thoughts and your journey with us today. No problem. Thanks for having me, Stephanie. This was fun. Thanks for joining us today. As Gigi shared, LEK has been expanding, and that includes summer positions at both the associate and consultant levels. Please take some time to review the links in the show notes to learn more about the firm, the work that they do, these two different roles, and how to apply, both for summer positions or full-time, as well as management consultants' resources to help you on that recruiting journey. We'll see you next time.